So church this morning, we're gonna do something really special. And Revelation 12, 11 tells us that the enemy is overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So church, I wanna welcome you to Testimony Sunday. Testimony Sunday. Who's excited to hear some testimonies from amazing people? Amen. This, uh, this was put on my heart a couple weeks ago during our real life group. And so often, it was, it was God speaking to me, saying so often you forget what this church means to you. So often you forget what's happened here at this church, how you've been transformed through this church's platform and how much this church means to your family. So I thought if it was important for me to tell what this church means to me, to my small group class, I felt it was important for the congregation as a whole to hear what Elkhorn Baptist Church means to them. So I've got uh, three amazing, amazing people that you're getting ready to hear from that are going to answer the question, what does Elkhorn Baptist Church mean to me? What does Elkhorn Baptist Church mean to me? And as they're up here sharing their testimony about that, I want you to ponder on that same question this morning. What does Elkhorn Baptist Church mean to you? What does Elkhorn Baptist Church mean to you? So let's get started. I want to introduce to you and if you would put your hands together for the one, the only, Willie Bland. Thank you. Hey, glory to God. Good to see you all. They asked me to come up here and, and to say what Elkhorn Baptist Church means to me. I couldn't say enough about this church. I come in here several years ago. Glory to God. Brother Brian Rafferty, that's a man of God. He never give up on you. He always told me, he said, I believe in you. He said, I believe in you and I never forgot that. I was strung out on drugs. I was on meth, heroin, alcoholic, everything under the sun. And Jesus Christ changed my life. He touched me in this church right here, sitting right up in here somewhere I don't remember and I act plumb crazy. But glory to God, when God touches you, that's what happens. You can't help it when you get the Holy Ghost inside of you. This church has been here for me. My wife and her mother and him came to this church. And I was raised in a holiness church. Well, I wasn't really raised there. I kind of went in and out. And um, I was always taught against the nominal churches and stuff, which, which is fine, you know, whatever they think. But the, the message is the same. You know, you go by the message. Brother Brian was preaching. It doesn't matter what you are. It just matters what Jesus is inside of you. So I accepted the Lord and I started walking. I started listening to Brother Brian preach. I trusted that man of God because he said what he said went back to the Word. And that's what I like. I'm a Word man. It goes back to the Word. I believe it. If it ain't the Word, it's your opinion. It don't matter. We all got opinions, but the Word of God will stand. So this church means a lot to me. It means holiness. It means, it means love. There's love in this church. There is love in this church and love. The Bible talks all about God is love. If you love, it's because God is in you. Right, brother? If you love, it's because God is in you. So this church has been here for me in and out. Even when I didn't want to come, it still stood. Even when, I, even when my mind was wondering, he still stood. He said, come on in, we love you. Come on in, we love you. And then I realized the goodness of God draws men to repentance. Huh, come on. Every day, every day, every day. You got to die to self every day. This ain't easy. It's simple, but it ain't easy. So this church means a lot to me. I've seen people saved. I've ministered to people. God's called me to preach and evangelize, and I'm going out and changing the world. Go ye therefore, he said. He didn't say, he said, he didn't say don't sit in a pew. He said, go therefore, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you've been given, freely give. That's what's inside the Great Commission. So I've grown to this stage and it doesn't happen overnight. 
But God is good and God is faithful. And we stick right with His Word. And this church has pulled me into that. Even when I didn't like it, Brother Brian, He step on your toes, but you just line right up. The truth will set you free, but first it'll make you mad. Come on. It will. It'll make you mad because your flesh don't like it. If you don't like it, take it up with God. He said it. Come on now. So I love everybody in here. I'm grown in love. Even Jesus grown in stature. Jesus grow, the Bible said. So we grow. That's what we do. We encourage one another. I love this church. Um, it means a lot to me. It means, it means love. It means, it means union. It's something I never had. I never was involved in anything. I never wanted to be a part of anything. I always wanted to step out because it, it took my responsibility off. But now when God said, pull your big boy britches up, it's time to get going, boy. That's what we do. So we, we love people. We, we, we get people saved. We disciple them. We lead them to Christ. That's what I've been called to do. And that's what this church has taught me to do. We move, we move, we move. So that's what this church means to me. I, got, I, could, I could sit here and talk for a month about what it means to me. But i got to let go and let God. Now I'm going to introduce you to a sister right here right now that will bring you to your feet and bring you to your knees. She's got a testimony unlike any other. She's a woman of God and I love her. She speaks the word in season and out of season and she'll tell you what this church means to her. Without further ado, Miss Latanya Bridgewater. Hallelujah, glory to God. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. What Elkhorn Baptist Church means to me, amen. This has been a place of refuge. You see, we can talk a good game. We can minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I was that woman at the well. Amen. Jesus met me in a place of brokenness. He came to that well, praise God, where I stood. And he began to tell me all about myself. See, the book of Psalm talks about those secret faults. We can mask it up. We can make it up. But in the, in the name of Jesus, he comes to rescue us. He reaches us right where we are, praise God. So you can sit here all day long and fool each and every one. But I met a man at the well and his name was Jesus. And he began to tell me about my mess and how he could turn it into a miracle. So I stand today decreeing and declaring that Elkhorn Baptist Church is a soul winning, life changing church. On that day at the well, Jesus began to tell me all about the things that the enemy came to bring shame and condemnation. He gave me living water that day that I would never thirst again. Psalms 51 says this. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. So as the woman at the well left to begin to evangelize to those, I was that woman. That God restored the joy of my salvation. Then I could teach transgressors their ways. So I stand today to say, Pastor Brian, I love you. And this has truly been a life changing experience for me. And God has set my feet upon platforms only because he restored the joy of my salvation that I can go now and teach transgressors his way. Amen. If you will turn your eyes to the screen, we have another testimony. Hey, good evening. Richard Wilson here from Hamilton Roll Tide, Alabama, for all my friends in Campbellsville, Kentucky. I want to tell you about three things that I think of when I hear the word Elkhorn Baptist Church. I think of faith. 
I think of mountain moving faith. I've been to Elkhorn a few times in the last three years, and every time I've ever been with anybody that goes to Elkhorn Baptist Church, if I've ever been in a service, whether it's Sunday school, on Zoom, or actually in the building, there's just this overwhelming sense of faith. I can actually feel faith in the room. When I talk to people one-on-one, whether it's in person, conversations on Zoom, on the phone, there's faith emanating from you guys. I think of faith. And that's how we please our Father in heaven. Without faith, the Hebrew writer says, it's impossible to please God. So Elkhorn Baptist Church is a place of faith. And you're pleasing God. The faith that you have in your hearts for Jesus is just moving his heart. And his heart being moved is moving Campbellsville, Kentucky, and the state, the Commonwealth of Kentucky. First, the second thing I think of when I think of Elkhorn Baptist Church is friends. I have made lifelong friends who are family. Now you can have blood family relatives, you don't see them in years, especially as we get older, and then you can meet friends in our faith community, and those friends become family. And I have made friends that have become family in Elkhorn Baptist Church, and I am forever grateful for those relationships. They're mean a lot to me. They bring a lot of depth. I'm not getting choked up. I promise myself I'm not getting choked up. (laughs) That's a challenge. And these relationships, I just draw so much from them. There's so many people at Elkhorn that are warm, that are deep, that are sincere. You guys don't even know I've ministered there a few times, and the words that you've released over me, like in the altar time, you'll come up and I'm praying for people, and y'all ask me, hey, can I pray for you? I've got a word for you. And I'm like, "Uh, yes, please. These sincere, meaningful words from a sincere heart, it just, I carry them with me. I treasure them. Finally, when I think of Elkhorn Baptist Church, I think of revival. There was an um, encounter with God that I observed at one of uh, the members that had attended a service in 2018 that has marked my life. April 29th, 2018, someone had an encounter in your church that is the most unbelievable encounter I have ever seen with my eyes. And I know that Kentucky is the birthplace of the Second Great Awakening and our nation's history that happened in August 1801. And I know that what I observed with my own two eyes in your sanctuary in April 2018 is an indicator of revival is coming. And it's not coming there. It's not coming here or anywhere else. It's coming in Kentucky. And Elkhorn Baptist Church is going to have a part to play in our third great awakening in our nation. I love you guys. I cannot wait to see you soon. God bless you. Bye-bye. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I hope that was hope that was a treat for you to hear from Mikey at the beginning of the service and Willie and Latanya, Pastor Richard. Mikey lives in Washington State. Ben, Washington State. Pastor Richard lives in Alabama. And obviously Latanya and, and Willie are right here in Campbellsville, Kentucky but we're reaching the entire country. We're reaching people around the world. We're reaching people who you'll never even know we reached. Amen? And you're doing the same thing. You're doing the same thing. So as you thought this morning about what does Elkhorn Baptist Church mean to me, we want to hear from you. We want you to send us a voice recording on, from your iPhone, you can email it to us. You can email it to me at connect at elkhornbc.org. You can record yourself uh, in a video on your phone and send it to us. We wanna hear from you. We wanna hear what God's done with this, this amazing, amazing church that we call home. How has that impacted your life? So we wanna hear from you. We wanna hear from you, okay? So we're not done quite yet, not done quite yet. We've got one more, couple more testimonies from some amazing people, amazing people that I get to call friends, that I get to call family, that have impacted my life 
in a way that I'll never be able to repay, in a way that I'll never be able to explain fully, in a way that only God could have done. So if you would, please stand to your feet as I introduce your pastors, Pastor Brian and Dana Rafferty. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. Let's honor our pastors this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Wow. And I can't forget Dee Dee as well. Little girl's amazing. Amazing. So, Rafferty family, I just want to thank you all so much for investing into Sarah and our family, for giving us opportunity. Yes, sir. For giving others opportunity for making this church a soul-winning, life-changing church. I wanna thank you for not giving up when it got hard, or when it gets hard. I wanna thank you for chasing after the calling that God has on your life. I wanna thank you for preaching truth. Dana, I wanna thank you for standing behind Pastor Brian. I wanna thank you for all those nights that you've cried and prayed and, and bled the blood of Jesus over him and your family and over this church. I know how much this church means to you all. And Dee Dee, you've grown up to be an amazing, beautiful young lady. Amen. And we're excited for what God has for you. And we love to hear you play and sing right here Amen. on this stage. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen, church. So without any further ado, I'm gonna hand the, the mic over uh, to this beautiful family. And uh, I, hope, I hope this blesses you. So love you guys. Thank you so much. Amen. One last time, here's what we're going to do. You know how I am. If you love Jesus, if he's redeemed your soul, if you're heaven bound with the hammer down, I want to give hell some trouble today. Amen. If you would, stand to your feet one more time. Give King Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on, Elkhorn. Woo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. You guys are something else. You can be seated. Um, so, I'm going to try to hold this together. What Elkhorn means to me. Um, I'm going to stand up here because I don't want to fall. I want to thank you for allowing me to be who God created me to be. It took me a while to find myself. I tried to be T.D. Jakes and I realized he was black and I'm white. I tried to be Jensen Franklin. I tried to be Steve Ayers. I tried to be people. But because y'all are gracious to me, over time, you allowed me to find who God created me to be. And that's power in that. When you can be who God created you to be. But Elkhorn, you have allowed me to do that. This is going to be crazy, but this is what, when I think about Elkhorn, thank y'all for allowing me to make mistakes. <laughs> I thought about this a lot. I mean, you know, as a pastor, everybody thinks you own a phone booth and a cape. I have made tons of mistakes. But I remember my precious grandmother praying over me as a child. And she would always say, Brian, you're going to be somebody. And I'm going to be somebody. I am somebody. And so, but thank you, Elkhorn, that you realize you didn't hire a, a perfect pastor. I make tons of mistakes, but here's what I love about you. You helped me back up. You refused to allow me to stay down. And I love y'all for that. I really do. I love you for that. Thank you for loving and caring. I, I got cheat notes. Thank you for supporting my family. I thought about Dana and Destiny. I'm always in the spotlight. I'm up here preaching and teaching and evangelizing and revivals and I got an ordination service tonight at 6 o'clock and I can't imagine being a pastor's wife 
or a PK. Because people are hard, they'll hurt you. They expect Dana to be able to preach like me. And they expect Destiny to be a perfect little kid at school. And But what I love about Ilkhorn is that you don't put expectations upon Dana just because she's a preacher's wife. You love her as she is. She's introverted. She don't like a mic. I'm loud. I like to preach. I like to talk about my best friend. She's not the reverend. She's not the pastor. She is the pastor's wife. But thank y'all for allowing her, and I mean this, to be Dana. Just to be Dana. She's quiet. She's behind the scenes. I know some people think that she should be loud like me. She's not me and I'm not her. Yeah, thank God. In destiny. At nine months old, I gave this little girl to Jesus Christ over in the old parsonage where Shawana lives now. Had no clue what God was going to do, but we lost two children. And um, God used this little girl to heal me. I was mad at God. I was upset at God. But God used destiny all the way from China to come to Kentucky to heal me. And thank y'all for loving us. Thank y'all for allowing me to be real. I I, I thought about this. Y'all allow me to preach. A lot of churches would have a quick business meeting. But y'all just love the Word of God. Y'all just love each other. Y'all just love worship. And I thought about it. They love worship. We are a worshiping church. And I love it. I praise God for that. Thank you for trusting me to be your pastor, to be your lead pastor. Thank you for our home. I didn't want to forget that. I've seen hundreds of salvations here at this church. We started over in the old sanctuary. Brent, Jess, I see you guys. I remember y'all every Sunday. Y'all was right there every Sunday. We went from the old sanctuary to the worship activity center. And in 2013, a pivotal moment in this church took place. We had a 13 days, first fruits. I've seen, I seen a lot of things. I've seen salvations and I've seen miracles at this church. I've seen people who had who walked in with the fourth stage cancer. Hallelujah. You guys believe in God so much. You met her right where she was at. You met her at the altar. You laid hands upon her and you prayed. And today she's alive living in Louisville, Kentucky and she has no cancer. That's my church family, hallelujah. That's the Accord Baptist Church. And I love y'all for that. I also seen this church in nine months pay off a $90,000 debt. And that was on a Friday. And on a Monday, 14 acres, no, 12 acres, two barns, and a white house back there come up for sale right after we paid it off. It was $350,000. And in three years, I seen Elkhorn Baptist Church take that bull by the horn. And you paid off a $350,000 debt. And we're not, listen, we're not a rich church. We're just a blessed church. But in three years, $350,000 came in. And in 2015, we started building this beautiful sanctuary. And oh, by the way, let me go ahead and tell you this. This building and all this facility was $1.8 million. And in four years, over a million dollars, come on somebody, has come through this church to pay off this building. All right, I'm almost done. Elkhorn's home. This is, this is home. Even if God picks me up and places me somewhere else, Elkhorn Baptist Church will always be my home. I became your youth pastor October of 1999. Y'all, Holly and Chris, I tell the story all the time. This young man right here, Chris Wilson, taught me some, a valuable lesson. 
Can I share this with you real quick? I'm almost done. Praise team, y'all are already up here. We'll give the invitation in just a second. Chris Wilson. I, I was a small group leader. And Chris, and there was a bunch of kids every Monday night would come over to the house from 6 to 8. Don and Tom, y'all remember, sometimes 9, sometimes 10. Parents would call and say, is my baby coming back home? Baby. But Chris started praying for Holly. And he prayed so hard, I'll never forget this. He put his nose in the corner of my basement. And in my flesh, I was sitting there going, Chris. At this time, Holly was with somebody else. You remember that, don't you? We, we prayed that joker out. You know what I'm saying? Hey, it worked too, look. <laughs> But I remember Chris Wilson putting his nose, I, I remember this, in the corner. I'm talking about a Hezekiah moment. And praying and praying and crying. And I just sat back and looked at him. And he lit up and he said, Ron Rafferty, I'm going to marry that girl one day. Congratulations. <laughs> he, got, he got a ring on it. I seen that at Elkhorn. I seen that at Elkhorn. I became a youth pastor October 1999. Y'all ordained me February of 2001, that old sanctuary over there. I've been with you for 21 years. 21 years I've been affiliated with, with you guys. I was a divorced man. Everybody else says, Rafferty, God can only use you to maybe teach Sunday school. Uh, work in youth ministry but God can never use you on a platform being a lead pastor that's not what Elkhorn said Elkhorn said what God started in you as a child while you was yet in your mother's womb that God ordained you and set you aside and we believe in that and y'all set me aside y'all ordained me and put me here y'all if you don't like it you pray for it and I became your pastor July the 20th, 2008. I've been here 12 years as your lead pastor. And I love every minute of it. I close with this. Elkhorn has some good people here. Elkhorn is the most loving, caring, sharing, non-judgmental church that I know of. And we're not perfect. We're just forgiven. Amen. But what I love about you most is this. You honest to God believe there's a man named Jesus Christ. You honest to God believe that one day you're going to take your last breath. And when you take your last breath, your decision has been made. What does Elkhorn mean to me? I just want y'all to hear this out of my voice. I love Elkhorn Baptist Church. We've had some rough times. And guess what? We're, we're probably still going to have some rough times. Welcome to church. But church should be like a marriage. Even when you don't get along, you learn how to work it out. You learn how to deal with each other. And that's what I love about Elkhorn. That y'all are a so winning, life-changing church. And from my heart, Dana's heart, and Destiny Lee Shane Rafferty's heart, all the way from China. We want to say from our heart to yours, we love you. Thank you for allowing us to be your pastors. Thank you for looking over some mistakes that we have made. Thank you for never giving up on us. Thank you for helping me back up out of the ditch when I fell in it. Thank you for dreaming with me. And thank you for never, ever stopping. Thank you all for giving hell trouble. Thank you all for loving God and loving these people, loving these church. Thank y'all for never giving up. And so in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may Elkhorn's best days be yet ahead. May God just show His favor, signs, wonders, and miracles in this place. We love you. God bless you. And I need you one more time to stand to your feet all through this house and give King Jesus a big old praise in here today. Hallelujah, yes. They're going to be leaving, so just remain standing. 
I don't know where you are, and I don't know where I'm at. What a day this has been. You say, Brian, it's been different. Good. You know what I'm so thankful about Elkhorn? Y'all don't get comfortable where you're at. And I praise God for that. Here's my greatest thing. Please, if you're in here today and you do not know Jesus Christ, please don't die and go to hell. Don't do it. You say, Brian, I'm a good person. Listen, there's good people in hell today. Well, Brian, I, I'm, a, I'm a good church member. That don't mean you're saved. There's a name above all other names. And the Bible says, He is the way, the truth, and the life that no man comes through Him to the Father but through Him. Someone asked you a question. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? You say, Brian, yes, I do. What about the person standing beside you? Do they know Jesus? I told Willie Bland this, and I'm going to tell you guys this. I told Willie, I said, Willie Bland, I believe in you, and you will not fail. Amen. Yeah, going Baptist Church, I believe in you, and we will not fail. Because greater is he that is in us than he is in the world. Amen? So if you don't know Jesus, I'm going to say a prayer. Um, maybe a testimony touched your heart today. Maybe you're standing here today saying, you know, Brian, man, I'm far from God. Listen to me, come home. Come home. Have a prodigal moment. Don't eat with the pigs. Dust yourself off and come and say, Brian, what's people going to think? Listen to me, you're at a good place. We all realize we're just one beggar telling another beggar where to find the bread. That's all we are. We're all, how many of y'all are a mess in here today? Come on. Yeah, we all are. Well, Brian, I'm having a good day. Hang on. It's coming. It's coming. I love you guys. Thank y'all for the 12 best years of my life. It's been tough. But the best is yet to come. Oh, one other greatest miracle that in my personal life that y'all allowed me to work through was August the 8th, 2010, when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. I didn't understand it, but there was a beautiful lady called Miss Becky Wood. And I think about this story all the time because it'll be a chapter in my book one day. I was scared to death, Tracy. I didn't know what happened to me. I could hear people talking around me, but golly, I felt God just loved me. He just healed me. And although it was like an oxymoron, you could hear people talking, you just felt the arms of God around you. And Miss Becky Wood walked up to me after the service was over, and I was crying, I was a mess. And I'll never forget what Miss Becky Wood said. She said these words, she said, Brian, don't you be ashamed. She said these words. It's real. It's real. She said, my daddy used to talk about this. And she ministered to me and she prayed for me and she got up and she left. But that touched my heart. That's the kind of people you are. You don't judge people. Keep loving them, amen? So I'm going to say a prayer. If you want Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I just want you to say this prayer. You say, Brian, you think somebody's going to get saved? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why we're here, right? We realize the horn could sound today, right? Nobody dies and goes to hell. Nobody dies and goes to heaven. You say, Brian, that's an easy gospel. Won't you try it? Just try it. So I'm going to say this prayer. If you want Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, all you got to do is say this prayer. You say, Brian, what's going to happen? Is, is the lights going to shine? Is it going to thunder and lightning? It may, I don't know. But here's what I do know. You won't go to hell. You won't go to hell. And so I'm going to say this prayer. If you want Jesus Christ to say this prayer, say, Dear God, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that God raised him from the dead. And I confess you as my Lord, you as my Savior, and you as my God. Teach me to love you and teach me to follow you. Write my name 
in the Lamb's book of life. And I believe today that I'm saved and I'm born again and I'm on my way to heaven. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. Did anybody at all today say, hey, Pastor, I said that prayer. I know we've done had two invitations, but you know what that means? Amen. Wow. Congratulations. Anybody else say, Pastor, I said that prayer. I'm not ashamed of God. Anybody else? Everybody good over here? Everybody good over here? Man, congratulations. Welcome to God's family. That's why I love Elkhorn. Listen, there are churches that do not see salvation all year. We see them almost every Sunday. Thank Jesus Christ for that. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Come on, I got the pastors up here, man. We're ready to help you. Amen. All right. I'm going to let Holly, she's going to close this out. Everybody else good? Well, what a beautiful spirit in here today. Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, I love you and thank you for being here today. Tell somebody else, say, neighbor, come on, say, neighbor, I love you and thank you for being here today. Give God one more big old shout here. God bless you, Elkhorn. Take us out, Holly.